In this video, we're going to take a look at some uh, common date functions. And the first one we're going to take a look at is a function called today. And because functions are part of formulas, we're going to make this a little bit wider here. Uh, because functions are part of formulas, I have to start with an equal sign. And you notice when you start typing the letter T, uh, it comes up with a list of all the functions that start with T. And then as you progress, it narrows it down. And there's apparently a function called today. And I can just click on that. And um, it only puts one parenthesis in for some reason. Uh, let's put the second parenthesis in. And there it is. tells me what day today is. And uh, the nice thing about this is if I come in tomorrow and open up this spreadsheet, it will tell me uh, what date it is tomorrow, uh, July 31st. Now, when you're doing functions, um, let's try doing it the wrong way here. Uh, if I don't put parentheses in, this is what you get. And, you know, I've got the name of the function right. Uh, there is no argument list, which is usually what the parentheses are for. Um, this is one of um, only two functions that I know of that don't require an argument list. And um, so you might think, well, maybe you don't need the parentheses. But if you don't put the parentheses in, Excel does not recognize this as being a function. So that's part, it's uh, just a syntax rule for Excel uh, regarding functions. Functions always have to have parentheses for an argument list, even if there's nothing in the argument list, as with the today function. We don't need to pass it any information for it to figure out what day today is. It just needs to go to the system calendar. And so it goes down to your system clock and calendar down here and looks up the date. If that happens to be wrong, you're going to get the wrong date here. Uh, it does not go out to the internet someplace and, you know, make sure that it's pulling down the correct date. It just looks at your calendar on your computer system. Okay. And then once you've got that in, uh, you can, you know, you can format it any way you want to, short date, long date. Um, and if you don't like any of those, you can go here to more number formats. And this dialog box will come up here. Uh, an alternative way to get there is to right click and choose Format Cells. And you get the same dialog box that pops up. So there's two ways to get there. And it recognizes that we've got a date there. So what it does is it selects date on the category side. And then under the different types of date, uh, it gives us a bunch of different options. And you should be able to find the option there that you want. Uh, if you can't, uh, there's also custom dates down here, uh, and we're not going to do custom dates in this video, uh, but you can basically format your date any way that you want to format it. Uh, but most of the time, you know, like 99.9% .9 of the time, you're just going to need to use one of these. Okay, and I don't want a two digit year. If you scroll down to the bottom, uh, there it is, you get a four digit year. Click on there. Now they're both formatted the same way. So that's a today function. It'll always tell you what day it is when you open up the spreadsheet. Uh, let's take a look at another function here. Let's make this a little wider too. And um, the other function that I know of that does not require any arguments is the now function. And the difference between the now function and the today function is that the now function gives you the date and the time. And it uses a 24 hour clock here. So uh, it's 1 p.m. or 1300 hours on a 24 hour clock. So if you want the date and the time, uh, use now. If all you care about is the date, uh, use today. And notice you can also go in here and you can customize the format for um, this to be a short date as well. You can basically just tell it don't display the time. And you get uh, basically the two same what looks like to be the same thing in both of these two cells here. However, they're not exactly the same. If I check to see if they're equal, I want to know if A1 is equal to B1, uh, it comes back and says false. Okay, so it looks like they're the same, uh, but they're not because this actually includes the time, which is represented as a fraction of a day. So uh, this is a whole number. This is a number with a fraction in it, so uh, they're not equal. Uh, they're pretty close, but they're not equal. Okay, so those are two common functions. Uh, let's take a look at some other functions here. Um, let's take a look at, 
let's say that you want you already have a date here uh, and it's in a represented as a serial number which all dates are and but what I want is I want to be able to extract the month. I want to get that number 7 out of there. I want to be able to extract the day, the number 30, or I want to extract the 2013. Uh, there are some built-in functions that do that. That's something that uh, you may want to do fairly often if you're doing much work with dates. And the month function um, requires a serial number. Now when you see serial number here, that means we have to put in uh, a date and there's a date right up there that's a serial number and if I and actually it'll treat any positive number as a serial number whether it actually represents a date or not but this one does represent a date and if I hit the enter key uh, it just pulled out the number seven for me so if I need to check what month a particular date falls in I can extract that month and then do whatever I want to with it uh, in other formulas there is also a day function that requires a serial number and that will pull out the day part which is 30 and there is a year function that also requires a serial number if I want the year of B1 it should give me the number 2013 so use the month and the day and the year each one of them requires a serial number a date serial number as an argument and you can pull out the individual pieces now there may also be times when you have uh, you may be importing some data from some place and there be maybe a column for the month and a column for the day and a column for the year. They may be separate and what you want to do is you want to combine them all into a single date again and that's what the date function is for. It kind of goes the other way. So date um, requires three arguments. It will take a year number and a month number and a day number and it will convert them into the corresponding date serial number and uh, again notice the order here uh, in the United States we usually do month and day and year but this function basically does the time units from big time units down to small time units so it requires the year first and then the month and then the day so the year is in this cell and then a comma and the month is in this cell and then a comma and the day is in this cell and then close my parentheses and what I've done is basically taken those numbers and converted them back into a serial number and uh, now I've, I'm pretty much back where I started so if you want to pull the parts out you can do month and day and year if you want to put them back together that's what the date function is for and there's one other function we're going to take a look at related to dates uh, there's actually a lot more than this but uh, these are the ones I think they're probably most common there's a weekday function and it requires a serial number as well so let's just give it this serial number right here and then close the parentheses and it comes back with a number and the number is going to be a number from one to seven and by default Sunday is day number one Monday is day number two Tuesday is day number three so today is a Tuesday and uh, this will tell you what day of the week any particular date uh, falls on there are some other options uh, here uh, let's go to our formulas tab here and let's go to date and time and you can see all of the date and time functions there's quite a few more than the ones that we actually uh, looked at um, but let's take a look at this uh, weekday function and it says it wants a serial number so I'm going to click on a serial number here for it and then for return type um, it says um, if we want Sunday to be day number one and Saturday to be day number seven put a one in there and that's the default actually um, for Monday to be day number one use a two um, for Monday to be day number zero uh, use a three and I think there's actually several other options for that as well um, most of the time I don't think you need to put anything in here uh, most of the time it's probably fine if Sunday is considered day number one and Saturday is considered day number seven but you do have some other options there if you want them so I'm going to cancel that and uh, that's it for the uh, for some of the most commonly used date functions